Hello spiritual individuals and welcome back to another video. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. My name is Trixie and I'm an Egyptian garden witch who loves to write stories and create music. So in today's video we're going to be talking about cleansing magic and discussing the ways in which we can cleanse either ourselves, our family and friends, our home or even our witchy items and supplies. We'll also be discussing five reasons on when and why we should ideally cleanse. So I'm going to do that bit first and then I'm going to talk about after that the different ways in which we can cleanse. So grab a cup of your favourite drink and relax. So first things first, I'd just like to apologise in advance if you hear any clonking about from my neighbours. It seems that now of all times they've picked this moment when I'm trying to do my video to clonk about in their kitchen. So if you hear anything, that's just next door and I apologise for that. I also like to mention that if you see me looking down occasionally at my screen like so, uh, that's just because I'm looking at my script and I'm trying to not forget anything for this video. So without further ado, let's just actually get on with the video. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the five reasons on when and why we should ideally cleanse. Now these aren't, you know, five laws that you have to uphold. These are just more of uh, guidelines, let's just say, on what I personally think constitutes as a reason for cleansing. So the first thing, because there's five of them all together, the first one on the list is you should ideally cleanse if the item or place is new and you've just got it. So I say item or place because, for example, with items, and we can use tarot decks as an example, you may be getting a new tarot deck or oracle deck and you don't really know where it's, where it's been or who's touched it, so it's good to cleanse all of your new witchy items just after you get them or you know, at least around the time that you've got them, just so all of that energy in the witchy supply or item can be cleansed and is neutral, so you can implement your energy into it. As for the home or the place that you live in, if you've just moved into a new house or uh, an apartment, a flat or wherever you live, it'd be good to cleanse the area that surrounds you as well, just so any negative or other energies from different people is all gone away and you can basically start again and implement your own energy into your home which creates good vibes let's just say. So very recently you may have seen in my in bulk video that I did a house cleanse. I usually do that once a year because I find if I cleanse too often it actually gets rid of all the energies that I want to keep around. So yeah house cleanse is more of an annual thing for me. Annual. <laughs> I can't say words today. <laughs> Anyway, moving on to the second reason is to do with being physically touched by someone else and I don't mean it in that way. Let's try and move that thought out of our minds. I mean if, for example, especially empaths, if you go to a party or a gathering and you've got loads of people hugging you or being in the same room as you, you tend to pick up all of their energy and emotions and it can become very overwhelming. So it's good that after you've been to the party or gathering that you then cleanse yourself so all of that rubbish let's just say just goes away and it's the same with your witchy items if they've been physically touched by somebody else it's good to cleanse it afterwards because you don't want their energy messing up yours in your witchy item. Moving on to reason three and this one is actually quite similar to the first reason is if you're passing on your home or your witchy items onto somebody else, it's good to cleanse it first so that whoever comes next can put their energy into the house or witchy item and that all of your energy has been gone. And the reason for this is mostly because you don't want the two energies to basically mix together because, for example, if you're using a tarot deck and you give it to someone else and I actually believe that the tarot deck has its own conscious energy in it as well so the uh, the wand chooses the wizard and so it's the same with all divination items so it's good to just cleanse your energy from the witchy item before you pass it on to somebody else so that the energies don't confuse each other for uh, the tarot deck if that makes any sense because if you pass on and I'm using tarot deck as an example because it, it's the only, well it's a good example for me. If you pass on the tarot deck onto somebody else and then they want to do a divination reading and it hasn't been cleansed, it can come back as confused or wrong because it still thinks that it's kind of working for you and not the other person. 
So hopefully that makes sense. So reason number four, we talked about in reason number two about being physically touched or whatever. So now we're going to move on to being spiritually touched. And this mostly happens when you are not protecting yourself and you haven't put any protections up. So this is for, it's kind of like a combination between banishing and cleansing because when you don't protect yourself, you basically end up getting all these negative energies and negative entities being attached to you and, and causing you misery and annoyance and all that. So it's good for, you know, if you haven't protected yourself, this cleansing is good for basically getting rid of anything that's sort of attached itself to you spiritually. And you should probably do the cleansing after you've banished the negative stuff away and then you can cleanse yourself from any rubbish that's left over. So yeah, reason number four is because you're spiritually attacked by negative entities and these can include, you know, spirits or deities even. That actually does happen. And also, I just want to mention as well that when I was doing my research online, I didn't find that many cleansing magic videos. I mean, I found a few, but not as many as protection magic videos, which was a bit odd to me because I value cleansing magic to be just as important as protection magic especially for beginner witches. So I was a little bit surprised actually when I discovered that and it's sort of relevant to the video but it's just a, a incidentally, you know, I found that. <laughs> just in case you're interested really, I'm trying to keep this video actually entertaining. And finally, reason number five is simply because you just get this feeling that something needs to be cleansed. For example, very recently in fact, I was using my pendulum whilst contacting a few deities of mine that I'm working with and I noticed in some of the yes and no answers that I was asking my deities through the pendulum, the pendulum was acting a bit odd, I guess, and also like really its yes was like this rather than, you know, big yes, it just felt really overworked and tired so I may have been using my pendulum a bit too much recently especially with the fact that I work with multiple deities so sometimes I talk to more than one and the pendulum has to switch between each deity so it can be very overworking or overwhelming I guess for the pendulum so I was actually thinking of getting another pendulum so I could use both in you know in case one needs to just rest and all that and for me, things like crystals and pendulums, they don't really need a charge. They kind of, to me, self-charge during the night or when you're not using them. But cleansing, they do kind of need it, mostly because, for example, with the deities, if you're contacting more than one or, or just even one, it can sort of really tire the pendulum or, you know, the thing that you're using. So, yeah, reason number five is just simply because you Feel like it needs a cleanse and that can include yourself your home the place you live in or the items that you use in your craft so now we're going to move on to the different ways in which we can cleanse again these are just suggestions you don't have to you know follow any of them if they don't feel right for you or if you don't resonate with them so these are just examples and if i've missed anything please let me know down in the comments and you can add your own ways of cleansing so we can basically have a look and maybe even discover something new so I'd really love for that to happen so yeah let's start with the elements now you can use each element individually or you can use them all together and if you're using them all together you can either get items to represent each element so you know a bowl of water for the element of water or an incense for the element of air and pop them in a circle or something or you can actually just visualize each element in your mind. You can also use a wand or staff because I find that they actually seem to represent all five of the elements rather than just air or fire like some other people believe because if you think about it the branch comes from a tree that's part of the earth so that's already the element of earth. They provide oxygen so that's the element of air. They have had the sun shine on them so that's the element of fire and they've also had the rain pour on them so that's the element of water and trees also have their own conscious energy or spirit in them so that would be the element of spirit as well so if you 
struggle to find any items individually that represent each element or you are not very good at visualising, then ones on staffs are really good to represent all five of the elements. And you can use a wand or staff to cleanse an item or yourself and they're just really good. So yeah, that's just an idea in case you struggle to visualise or find anything individually to represent each element. Each element. I must be careful not to say elephant either, because that's something that I do constantly when I'm trying to like pronounce element. Just, uh, I can't speak today either. <laughs> now moving on to each element individually, we'll start with water as well. For things like the element of water, you can use the rain or storms, so any watery, weathery thingy. <laughs> You can also use the water within a lake or an ocean, a sea, pond, river, etc. Or in fact just use the tap water or the water from the tap because you can get a bowl of water for example and sprinkle droplets of water on you or your witchy items. And you can also take cleansing baths and showers so you can get your own handmade herbal soaps or those little spell bags which you put little herbs and spices in and then pop that in the bath. That, that's a really good way of cleansing yourself and that's actually good for protecting and cleansing at the same time so definitely do cleansing baths and showers as well also I just want to quickly say that with things like rivers and lakes or maybe the, the ocean or sea just be careful when you use that water because uh, particularly in the UK we don't really know what's in the water feces for example so if you have this idea of basically going into the ocean or the sea or a river just be weary of that especially if you live in the uk moving on to the element of air this basically covers any incense sticks or cones and this is also a very popular way of cleansing so you can grab yourself an incense stick or an incense cone Mostly people use white sage or just sage in general to cleanse but with me I find actually using your intuition and just picking out whichever scent you like the most or you think that will be good for cleansing that works just fine you know you don't have to sort of follow the uh, witchy guidelines let's just say on which herb or spice to use for cleansing so I know a lot of people use the sage, particularly the white sage, to cleanse, especially when it comes to incense sticks or the, you know, the herbal smudge sticks as well. But I tend to just choose with whatever resonates with me, whatever feels right for that spell. You can also use the air that's around you, whether it's inside or outside as well. I mean, that's actually quite an easy and affordable thing to do because often you get incense sticks or incense cones that are actually quite pricey. So yeah, definitely the element of air, you can just stand outside on a windyish day and then make everything blow away, <laughs> basically. All that negative energy just blow away. Next we're moving on to the element of fire. Now, fire is actually a tricky one because obviously you don't want to set fire to anything, particularly your witchy items. But using a image or like a video of a, a fireplace or something which you can get easily online or on YouTube specifically, you can find like loads of four hour videos of a, a crackling fire going off. It's like some kind of ASMR meditation videos. But you can find loads of them on the internet, particularly YouTube, and you can have that as your picture of the fire and use the energy from that picture or the fire so it's like a representation of the element you can use that to cleanse the items or home person people etc you can also just visualize the fire as well so if you're really good at visualizing things just picture the fire or the flame going in your head and use that image or that energy in your mind to cleanse some stuff next we'll move on to the element of earth so you can use the earth, or particularly dirt, is what I like to use. So I've heard people actually say that they bury their items and the earth then cleanses it over a time period or, you know, during the night or something. But I'm always a bit weary of that because you don't really want to be burying something toxic into the ground or something that would be eaten by the worms or anything underground. So maybe not a good idea on that one. 
not even like crystals or anything because they can be quite toxic as well. I suppose it does depend on what type of crystal you use but I'm not really sure which one's toxic or not so yeah with, with the bearing of the items it's an idea but I wouldn't really recommend it. I recommend actually using just the dirt you know picking up a handful and sprinkling it on your items and then you can brush it off and the same with you know sprinkling dirt on yourself and then the act of brushing it off is like physically brushing off the negative energy and you know physically cleansing yourself. Other things that are associated with the element of earth, although I've kind of put them into their own categories, include things like crystals and herbs. So if we start with crystals, because they can be used for cleansing as well, and these include things like amethyst, clear quartz, and I think selenite. But if you're not too sure, you can just do an online search and check quickly which ones are used for cleansing. But the ones that I found are amethyst, clear quartz and selenite. So those are really good for cleansing. And with herbs, again, there's the white sage, which we talked about. And there's also rosemary, frankincense and I think lavender as well. And lavender is actually one of my favourite flowers because as well as having witchy uses, it also has mundane uses in the fact that it's pretty good at getting rid of scorpions and I think spiders as well. And it's very good for the bees and butterflies. I also heard as well that rosemary seems to be a really good herb for a number of things, not just cleansing. I hear that it is actually like, like a really popular and good herb to get or have because it just has so many uses. Moving on, we've got the final element, which is the element of spirit. So I like to connect this with your own personal energy. So this is really good for anybody who doesn't have too much money or is into I suppose I think it's thrifting or antiques and boutiques you know basically finding stuff that has you know value for money and all that because I will admit I'm a person like that as well so I find using my own personal energy completely free and it's also really easy to access and use using your personal energy or the element of spirit to cleanse a witchy item really good because you can just hold the item in your hand and then you can sort of focus your energy into the item to cleanse it and as long as your intention is there then the power of belief plus intention can do so many things so yeah in fact that's actually what I did with my pendulum recently I didn't have enough time to get a cleansing cone or my cauldron as well and so I basically ended up using my own personal energy because I was actually in the middle of a conversation with a deity, like trying to ask them questions and the pendulum was really struggling. So I said, it's okay pendulum, just use some of my own energy. That's completely all right. So yeah, definitely the element of spirit, which covers your own personal energy, really good to do and use as well. Moving on, we go on to sound. I hear that's really good for cleansing as well. So you can listen to mantras. There's cleansing mantras, there's also protection mantras, which will be mantras that cover everything. But yeah, particularly cleansing and also banishing and protecting and all of that. So you can easily find them online. I might leave some links to them in the description box, the ones that I use regularly that are really good for cleansing. So yeah, mantras are really good. And you can also listen to calm, soothing music and you can pop it on a speaker and let it cleanse the home, for example, or yourself and your witchy items you know you can put some headphones on or something and listen to it and just relax for a few minutes or you can even listen to heavy metal music or really loud stuff with a, a beat because I find it is very good for driving the evil and negative stuff out of the house especially because I think I read somewhere that some of these negative spirits don't like loud noises so you probably hear in folk tales or folklore of people, you know, banging sticks, ringing bells and things like that to basically drive the spirits or particularly the evil spirits out of the place. There's also things like a Tibetan singing bowl, so you may have seen that in my altar video for example. You can just tap the singing bowl and let the, the sound just flow through the area or the room. It's really good for cleansing and just relaxing the mind and all that. And speaking of singing actually, you can sing as well. So you can follow along the mantras and sing them alongside the actual mantra itself. 
or you can make up your own spell as well that is a song. So I think that's actually something that I do occasionally, uh, not very often, but it, I was actually thinking of turning this spell into a song at one point. So yeah, you can turn spells into songs and you can sing something that cleanses the area or yourself or your witchy items. You can even go into, if you ever heard of light language as well, I hear light language is good for cleansing and protecting, but that's a subject for another day. Then lastly, we have dancing. So in my protection magic video, I also talked about dancing in that. Dancing is really good because it covers a whole load of magic, but definitely protection magic and cleansing magic. So you can dance to some calming music or again, loud heavy metal music or rock music or anything like that. And you can do slow movements or hand gestures, you know, things like this. And that's another way of cleansing. So hopefully what I've listed today is enough to get you started. If there's anything that I've missed, feel free to pop it all down in the comments because I, I love reading comments and things like that. And, you know, this is a nice, calm community where we can all help each other. So, yeah, let's do that. And, yeah, <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely magical day and bye for now. It's fun to make a spell, make some simple charms I lay the good intent and then cast away It's fun to make a spell, make some simple charms I lay the good intent and then cast away